now, but um, it looks like you guys are seeing my screen. Can yes. you confirm that, Vince? Yes, it is looking good. Ludwig Geislinger it is here from the Harvard Center for Computational Bio Bi Biomedicine, right? And mm -hmm. welcome, right. and difficult. take it away. You have 15 minutes. Perfect. Thank you so much, Vince. Um, great pleasure, of course, uh, to be here, at least virtually, and um, talk about BoxicDB, a new database um, for uh, the um, for microbial uh, signatures for the interpretation of human microbiome experiments. And I, I guess I start with the acknowledgement by saying this is not only the work of myself, but rather of many, and I'm uh, particularly pointing here out Curtis Hattenhauer and Levi Waldron, which have been true guides on this project. A couple of words on uh, the introduction. I think many of us are well familiar with differential gene expression analysis, where we typically compare, in the basic case, two sample groups for differential gene expression analysis, and subsequently um, look for enrichment in differential expression using well-defined databases, such as the gene ontology or the CAG. Um, database often subsumed in the uh, very popular MSIGDB database for some sort of gene set enrichment analysis. Now, today we're talking about uh, microbiome data, and often enough, um, the data looks very similar at the end of the day. So depending on which technique you're using, whether you're using 16S RNA-seq, where you're mapping your reads to a marker gene and are able to resolve up to the genus level, or whether you're using newer approaches where you actually take your sample and map all the reads um, to um, uh, different bacterial genomes and are then able to classify bacteria as opposed to genes, again, um, comparing them between two different um, conditions in the basic case. Now, we would likely um, like to do some sort of enrichment analysis here as well, taking this uh, list of differentially abundant microbes, but you're missing some sort of comprehensive databases such as MSIGDB uh, or GO or CAG in the microbiome space to do such analysis, which makes this pretty much infeasible. So when we started off this project a couple of years ago, the goals were to um, improve the interpretability of disease-linked microbiome profiles, by translating the concepts from gene set enrichment analysis and developing microbial signature resources. And we had three particular goals in mind here. First of all, we wanted to develop some sort of database that hosts microbial signatures. We wanted an online wiki where curators could feed in these signatures that are curated and users could interactively access these signatures. And then on the other hand, we wanted to develop and assess methods to enable microbe set enrichment analysis. And this database is now available here under boxingdb.org. Now a quick look at the database on what kind of data is actually there. So you see we started a couple of years ago and over time went through the literature with a number of curators um, uh, uh, currently having around 2000 signatures curated from around 500 pa papers on a differential abundance, covering all sort of geographies, sites, but also different conditions that go from um, cancer over metabolic diseases or over to antibiotics. And in all of these studies, we're typically looking at a contrast where we are comparing some sort of study condition with some sort of controls. Now you can look a little bit into the characteristics of these signatures where you see most of um, um, the, the microbes are contained only in one or a couple of signatures. But similar as for gene sets or gene signatures, you see a bunch of usual suspects that are turning up over and over again as differential abundance. So you see here things like streptococ uh, streptococcus or Prevotella, for example, that turn up as differential abundance in up to 200 signatures. You can also look at the signature sizes where you see most of these signatures are rather small. So a typical gene set or gene signature is typically around, uh, around five to 500 genes. But what we're seeing here, we're typically having around five to 10 microbes in such a, um, a signature. And then you can um, use controlled vocabulary to um, uh, classify, for example, the condition, but also the body side that these signatures are annotated to. And you can, for example, see um, what kind of signatures we have really in the database going here um, with a lot of anatomical system disease signatures, but also a lot of um, signatures that are looking into. 
And you can return to this top 10 microbes here and kind of like ask, what are the proportions that these bugs are really found in signatures associated with these conditions? And you see, for example, here that vector aroidus is often or more proportionate, over disproportionately associated with things like metabolic disease or, or antibiotics usage when compared to the background of the database. Now, a little bit of look at the architecture of BugSigDB. We have this web access. This is a website where the curators feed in the signatures and users can access interactively these signatures. But then we have also quite some infrastructure and uh, GitHub magic to basically pull down these signatures systematically. So there is a um, GitHub repo, Buxic DB Exports, which does a weekly export of this dynamic data that curators are continuing to feeding in. And in order to have some sort of um, stable release every half a year together with the bioconductor release cycle, we are publishing um, this um, 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 data dump to Sonodo where people can pull that um, for the sake of reproducibility. And then if you prefer to work in R and Bioconductor, which uh, many of us likely um, do, given that they're here at this conference, there's a Bioconductor package named Voxic DBR, which basically allows to either pull these weekly exports or these stable releases into um, um, a data frame in R, and then allows to basically a number of convenience function to extract these signatures, to write out these signatures into other formats if you prefer. Um, tools outside of R and Bioconductor, and also programmatically access pages of BugSigD. And the last infrastructure piece here is this BugSigDB stats package, another R package that lives on GitHub only, which allows to analyze the contents um, in a, a continuous integration setup space and it allows um, to look into signature statistics, but also metadata statistics and ontology based summaries. So there are a lot of things that you can do with this data. Um, a major use case is, of course, using these signatures for enrichment analysis. And um, uh, as Samuel has pointed out, um, one difficulty is, of course, to find a setup where you have some sort of ground truth. So for that, we turn to colorectal cancer data sets from curated metagenomic data, a package that is available in Bioconductor. And we basically looked at 10 different um, colorectal cancer data sets that overall when pooled compared some 600 colorectal cancer stool samples versus some 600 um, uh, healthy control samples. Now you can basically go about the enrichment analysis in two different ways. Either you apply your differential abundance analysis and your enrichment analysis on the overall pooled data set which is um, um, a good idea as you um, have more power in this setup, but you might also wanna basically apply your enrichment methods on every single data set and then apply some sort of rank aggregation. The second setup is of course useful to uh, inspect the performance of um, these uh, enrichment methods on individual data sets. Uh, you will also need some sort of ground truth. And here we um, uh, worked or um, used two uh, that we call spiking signatures, so-called positive control signatures that in uh, previous studies here from Verbal et al. in Nature Medicine 2019 and from Thomas et al. also in Nature Medicine 2019 had established um, species and genus level signatures of um, uh, bacteria that were found with increased abundance in colorectal cancer um, versus controls. And we're now basically asking, do we find these positive control signatures in these 10 data sets um, when we're applying differential abundance methods? And what kind of enrichment uh, methods are we applying? Well, we turn to this paper that we published um, uh, last year where we actually quite systematically looked through um, uh, the literature and available enrichment analysis and systematically benchmarked 10 different enrichment methods. Among them, the classic hypergeometric test where you basically threshold your differentially expressed gene and then apply some sort of Fisher's exact test. And then also what we find, we and others found to work very well, some sort of gene set scoring method that computes some sort of gene score and the weighted mean over your, your, your signature and then applies some sort of sample permutation to estimate the p-value. 
Now you can look at the results here for the colorectal cancer um, a case. And in A, we are basically looking at the pooled data sets and we start to looking at the um, uh, Fisher's exact test results, so overrepresentation results. And the first thing that you see that you see these two positive controls, these spike in signatures from Verbal and Thomas, you see them indeed coming up on top. So you have your proof of concept. But you also see two other colorectal cancer signatures from Alali and Wu, which are uh, uh, coming up as independent replication. And then you see also signatures that investigating other diseases. And interestingly, most of them are coming from oral samples, which is in line that in colorectal cancer in these stool samples, you apparently have an introgression or migration of oral microbes into the gut as one possible disease causing me mechanism. You can also look now at these two different methods that we identified as being effective and um, working very well. You can take this, this standard, very popular overrepresentation test and then this um, uh, sample permutation um, uh, product test. And you can basically look for all 10 of the data sets. Where do you now rank these two positive controls? where uh, basically means if you're ranking more towards zero, you're ranking more towards the top of the ranking. So these are percentile ranks. And it figures, depending on the sample size of your data set, you of course have different power to detect these, um, uh, uh, these, uh, these meta-analysis signatures. And it figures PADOC um, performed overall a little bit better than um, this over-representation analysis did. You can also return to this piece here in A and basically look what are actually the overlaps between these different signatures from colorectal cancer, but also other disease phenotypes. So we basically seeing here these signatures again that we have here in A, and you can actually see the microbes on genus level, which seem to turn up, uh, turn off, um, turn up over and over again. And among them is here apparently Fusobacterium, which is highly upregulated in colorectal cancer versus controls, and it seems to be there in all the other signatures as well. Also, Porphyromonas uh, and Peptostreptococcus seem to be very frequent in there. Now, um, I only inspect here a little bit more Fusobacterium, and um, here a Birkin hypothesis indeed that goes beyond observational studies is that this a particular species um, of the genus Fusobacterium, Fusobacterium nucleatum, seems to um, uh, 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 produce format, which is apparently a metabolite that you don't want to have um, uh, in, in, in your colon, as it seems to be an oncometabolite and um, uh, has, to, uh, has apparently protumorigenic um, uh, effects. Okay, and I think with this, I'm already um, well over time. Um, so I um, thank everybody for the attention. I will be happy to answer question and just pointing the uh, pointing out the availability of these different infrastructure pieces. Again, BoxicDB is available on boxicdb.org. And there is this BoxicDB, our bioconductor package for accessing BoxicDB signatures from within bioconductor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ludwig. Questions from the audience? Or in the chat? All right, well, nothing yet. 